Hi, I'm Michael Strong from Michael Strong Rubber Stamps. Great to be back with you. We're going to learn a little bit different technique today. I'm going to show you how to make some picture frames using a punch. So let's get started. We're going to start by doing a three inch frame using my favorite new tool of all time. It's the Marvi Yoshida one and three quarter inch punch. It's one of these new lever punches. and They're really easy on the hands, nice to use. And what I'm using is a three inch piece of cardstock. And what I'm going to do to make the frame, when I drop the paper in, it lands on the flat surface at the bottom. So I'm just letting it rest on the inside of the punch. I'll turn this a little bit so you can see that there are little points, little cat's ears sticking out from this edge here. When you get ready to punch it, you want to make sure it's squared up inside and then just press the lever, which is so easy to do. And here you have this perfect little three inch square frame. Now this is way too plain for a scrapbook page. So I'm going to decorate it with a giraffe stamp. Uh, this is one I designed it. And I have a whole line of rubber stamps and I designed them all. And this is one of the wildlife prints. So we're going to ink it up with a nice deep rich brown. I'm using this Van Dyke Brown. It's from the Nick Bantock collection from Rager Industries. It's a nice, deep, rich brown. I, I get all of the ink all over the stamp like that first, and then I go back over and I tap it so that you get a nice, even pattern. Line up your piece. Press firmly on this one because it's a big stamp. You need to put a lot of weight, so I'll put a lot of weight on top of it and then peel it off and you'll see how that's going to look. I also have this Distress ink. It's a little bit paler brown. This one's called Old Paper is the color. It's the Distress ink from Ranger Industries as well. And I'm gonna ink about half of the frame. What it does, it gives it a little bit more interest because you got some dark and some light element on the same piece. So there's our frame and we're ready to frame the picture. So put the frame on. So there's one of the elements we're going to use on our page today. The main piece of the page is a window pane that I'm going to make with that same punch. It's a little bit more complicated, but I want to show you how it's done. So I'm just going to drop the paper in. This happens to be four and seven eighths inch square. So I'm going to drop it in and I'm going to push the paper all the way to the edge until I can't see any of it protruding from the side here. I'll turn it around so you can see that that's the first opening. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, but I'm going to move the paper this time this way all the way over until it kind of disappears just like on the other side. Punch, and then you've got half the window made. So I'm going to flip it around, push it through until paper disappears, snap. Now I'm going to do it on this side, same technique on all four panes, bam, and Voila, instant frame. What I've done is I've taken a picture from the day at the zoo, and this happens to be a picture of a giraffe and some of the Cub Scouts that went that day, including my son Colin. And it's a nice picture, but I think it was a little bit boring because of all the space in between. But when you add this window pane, it instantly becomes more interesting. Here's the frame on the picture. You can see how much more interesting it is now. And by the way, uh, you don't have to always use this size, that's so four and seven eighths inches. For instance, this one is five and a quarter inch square. This one is a five inch square. And here's the one that we did here, four and seven eighths inches. The reason I wanted to show you this is because using this technique, the dividers will be different sizes depending on the square of paper. So the bigger the paper, the bigger the mullions in the middle here. Let's start building our page now starting with a very zoo-like, jungly print, I'll call it. It's a nice, pretty green. And then to bump up the green factor a little bit more, I added this piece of vellum. Of course, you can see the pattern through the vellum, but it adds another nice element. This is my title block. It's just a one inch by 12 inch strip of paper, and I cut it to fit the page. Now, what I've done with that is I used some interesting kind of fiber to attach some metallic letters. It says day at the zoo. I left the last letter on because I wanted to show you a little trick for helping attach 
small things to fibrous pieces that normally would be hard to thread. I made a little aglet. You know, that's the hard thing at the end of your shoelace that helps you tie your shoes out of tape. I just wrapped a little tape around here and it really makes all the difference in how you can add little pieces. So I'm going to add a dot of glue, the chubby kind, to the back and that's gonna help hold it in place. And then I just take this little piece off, tape it to the back and then adhere it to your paper. So now we can start putting the rest of the elements in. We'll start with our frame, which is the main focus of the picture. And then some other pictures that I've done already that are like this one, the flamingos, and then some polar bears, and then the whole troop of Cub Scouts here. Of course, I have to put my own kids up top. So I added an interesting little feature, which is a brass dragonfly. And you just punch a little hole in the top, pass it through, and I sort of offset it a bit like that. So the final step is to add some jungly element, which are these paper palm fronds. Here's the finished page. Here's those little palm fronds. I hid the ends behind the picture and kind of draped them over the big window pane frame. I think it adds a nice little finishing element to the page. I have a couple of other designs that I did. I just wanted to show you this one because I made what I call a ladder frame. And it's the same technique with the same punch, but uh, you get three openings in that one. And if you like to do maybe different shape, you can do a circle frame using the two inch circle punch. As you can probably figure out, this is my new favorite tool, Marvy Yoshida punches. I love the way they work. They're great on the hand, easy to use. And they'll really punch up your page. So I hope you go out and try one and I'll see you next time. For step-by-step -step instructions on how to create this week's project, download the design guide featuring special make-it-your-own bonus tips.